Assalamu alaikum. Sir. So Abdullah, we have finished TIR in the last lecture, huh? Yes, sir, we finished the TIR. Uh, we're doing one, one numerical, I guess. We're doing this numerical. Just note down this numerical. Sanya, you were not there in the last class? Yes, sir, I was absent. We just wait for five minutes. I'm just finishing up this thing. Okay, yeah. Then we'll start something fresh. Abdullah, just note down this question. Yes, I know. Okay. So what happens is in this question is saying get the value of angle of incidence so that light gets TIR over this angle, over this surface. So we'll start from this point, this surface. So this is the critical angle. So first of all, let's calculate the critical angle for this surface. Critical angle sin C is <coughs> refractive index of rare and medium with respect to denser medium. So that's 1 by 1.25. So for 4 by 5, sin C is 4 by 5. So this is sin C, the value of sin C. The next is angle of refraction plus 90 degree plus sin C is 180 degrees. So R is 90 minus sin C. So that's angle of refraction. So that's a relation C. Uh, this is critical angle, 4 by 5. Now, I have to relate this R and C. It's a right angle triangle. In this right angle triangle, the sum of all three angles is 180 degrees. So you can say that R plus 90 plus C is 180. So you can say that your R is 180 minus 90 minus C or R is 90 minus C. Next, Snell's law at A. If you apply Snell's law at A, it means refractive index. Here, multiplied by the angle of incidence here, refractive index here, and angle of refraction here. So you will get 1 into sin i is 1.25 into sin r. So you get sin r is sin i is 1.25 into sin r. Next, what you can do is So sin i is 1.25 into sin r. Now we need sin r. You know that r is 90 minus c. So instead of this r, you can write 90 minus c. So you'll get sin i is 1.25 into sin of 90 minus c. And sin 90 minus c is cos c. So instead of this sin 90 minus c, you can write cos c. I know the value of sin c. But here I need cos c. So I'm using this identity that sine square C plus cos square C is one. So you can write cos square C is one minus sine square C. So you can write cos square C is sine C is four by five. So it's one minus four square by five square. So your cos C comes out to be three by five. You can substitute this cos C here. You will get your sine I is, it's 1.25 into three by five. That's 0 0.7. So your I is sine inverse 0 0.75. Sir, yes. Sir, for cos C, we can just apply the. We can solve the triangle method also, right? Uh, which, the, uh, which triangle method? Apply? So we can take a triangle. We can take an angle, right angle triangle. We can take an angle theta, and then sine theta is four by five. From there, we can find the. Yes, yes, yes. You can you can do that also. Yes. You can get the value of base, and you can. Okay. Sir. Do it. <coughs> That is 100 by 25 sine C. Yeah, 100 by 125. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 1 by 1.25. So I just remove this decimal, put two zeros. So it's 4 by 5.
Yes, Abdullah. Noted. Mm, sir, just a second. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's start the next topic. That's refraction through a spherical refracting surface. Refraction through spherical refracting surface. Till now, whatever we did in refraction was for a plane surface. If you have a plane surface, then how of this angle of incidence and angle of refraction will work. Now we'll do if you have a spherical refracting surface. So first of all, see how we obtain a spherical refracting surface. So to obtain a spherical refracting surface, To obtain a spherical refracting surface, what we do is we take a sphere we take a sphere as a transparent sphere. We cut this sphere. We consider a part of the sphere. This part will act as a spherical refracting surface. This part can act as a concave refracting surface as well as a convex refracting surface, which depends on the position of the rarer medium. So let's see, this is N1, which is rarer medium. And see the refractive index inside the sphere, inside the glass is N2. And I'm considering, considering this as a denser medium. So this is the denser medium into, and this is the rarer medium. So this surface, this, this particular shape is known as convex shape. This shape which is bulged outside is convex shape. And this shape is known as the concave shape. So towards the rarer medium, this is rarer. And this is denser. Towards the rarer medium, if the face is concave, then the surface is concave refracting surface. If the face is convex, then the surface is a convex refracting surface. Now, can you tell me what type of surface is this? Is it a concave or a convex surface? <clears throat> Towards the rear medium, you have a convex shape. So what type of surface is this? Is it a concave or a convex? Towards the rarer medium, you have convex face. So this one is a convex refracting surface. Similarly, if I put this surface in this way, I put this surface in this way. And I say this is N1, which is rarer. R stands for rarer. This is N2, and this is denser. D stands for denser. So towards the rarer medium, the surface is concave. So we call this surface as a concave refracting surface, convex refracting surface. So this is how we decide that a surface is a concave refracting surface or a convex refracting surface. If surface is convex towards the rarer side, then it is a convex surface. If it is concave towards the rarer side, then that is a concave refracting surface. So convex refracting surface means it's convex towards a rarer medium.
concave refracting surface, it's concave towards rear. It's concave towards rear. And there are a few more things like this is the center of the spherical refracting surface. We call this as the center of curvature. Center of curvature is the center of the spherical refracting surface. The radius of the spherical refracting surface is known as the radius of curvature. This is the radius of curvature. So for this surface, center should be here. The center of the surface is known as pole. This is pole. This is center of the sphere. This is the radius of curvature. Similarly, for this surface, see, it will complete sphere to the right hand side. So this is the center. This is the pole. From pole to center is the radius of curvature. So this is how we decide whether your given surface is a spheric, is a convex refracting surface or is a concave refracting surface. This is how we decide. Note it down. Tell me if you still have any doubts. Yes. Done, sir. Okay. Sanya, Fatma, written? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Next, we, next, we need some relations that can connect the object distance the image distance and the radius of curvature of these refracting surfaces. <clears throat> so, need relations. <clears throat> for spherical refracting surfaces. So when we derive the relation, we have two types of relations. One relation is for refraction from rarer to denser medium. <coughs> One relation is for refraction <coughs> from rarer to denser medium. And the relation is for refraction from <coughs> denser to rarer medium. So these are two types of relation that we use for spherical refracting surface. One is for refraction from rarer to denser, means your object is in rarer. Here, this is the position of object and you are getting image in tensor media. 
and this is refraction from denser means your object is in denser medium and your image is in rarer medium. So these are the type of relations for a spherical diffracting surface. Refraction from rarer to denser and refraction from denser to rarer images. So when we do refraction from rarer to denser medium, <coughs> we further have cases like we can do for concave surface. or we can do for convex surface. We can have real image. Or we can have virtual image. Similarly, for a convex refracting surface, we can have a real image or we can have a virtual image. The exactly same thing is for this case also. You can have for concave and convex surface. You can have real image or virtual image. Or you can have real and virtual for convex also. See, for all these cases, for all these cases, the relation is same. Like if you derive refraction, of relation for refraction from rare to denser medium for any of the case, you will get the same result. If for any of the case, you will get the same result. For any of these four cases, you will get the same result. So for all four cases, you will get same result. So for all four cases, you will get the same So we won't be doing eight derivation. We will do just two derivation. One for the rare to denser and another for denser to rarer. Just note it down, then we'll start calculations. Yes, written. Can I scroll it? Yes, sir. It's okay. So let's do the first derivation, which is refraction See, that's a very, very important derivation. So this is the mirror or lens? No, this is neither lens nor mirror. 
This is just one surface, spherical refracting surface. Lens is the combination of two surfaces. We are doing one single surface. So, okay. When you make lens, you combine two surfaces. You combine two concave surfaces or you combine two convex surfaces. Then you, then you get lens. So refraction. From rarer to denser medium. For let's say convex refracting surface, for real image. Convex refracting surface for a real image. <coughs> so, uh, this is a convex refracting surface. See, this is N1, which is rare. This is N2, which is a denser medium. This is your object. This is the center of curvature. This is pole. Between pole and center of curvature, this is the radius of curvature. So we take a light ray from pole and we insert it over here. This is the normal. To draw normal at every at any point join that point with the center of curvature. So this is the normal. So let's put center of curvature here. This is normal. So ray is moving from rarer to denser medium. So how should it bend? It should bend towards the normal or away from the normal? Sorry, towards the normal or away from the normal? Towards the normal. It should bend towards the normal. So the ray will bend towards the normal. And the ray passing through pole will go straight without any reflection, refraction. Because the ray which is going normally will not refract. So these two rays meet over this point And we call this point as the image. This distance is known as the object distance here. This, this one, this is the object distance view. This is the image distance V. This is the radius of curvature. So you need a relation which can connect this object distance, this image distance and the radius of curvature. And obviously the refractive, this is the N1 and N2. <coughs> so we need a relation which can connect N1, N2, U, V, and R. So what we can do is, this is object. We incident the ray over this point A. This is normal. This is incident ray. This is normal. So this is your angle of incidence. This is normal. And this is refracted ray. So this is the angle of refraction. And we call this angle as gamma. So the first task is to connect this I, R, and gamma somehow. We want we need to connect this I, R, and gamma. I call this angle as alpha. And we'll call this angle as beta. And this angle is gamma now. Draw the ray diagram first. Then we start the calculation. Draw the ray diagram. <coughs> and remember, this normal is a straight line. Huh? This is a straight line. This one. This red color is the normal. It's a straight line.
Okay. See, now I need, I just want to relate this I, alpha, gamma, and R. So let's see what we can do. See this triangle, A, O, C. Triangle, A, O, C. In triangle AOC, C alpha and this gamma are interior angle. I is the exterior angle. So the sum of interior angles is equal to the exterior angle. So that's the first equation. Similarly, if I take this triangle ACI in triangle ACI, in ACI, Fatma, which one is the exterior angle? In ACI, this triangle ACI, which angle is the exterior one? <coughs> Fatma, which one is the exterior angle the triangle? Sorry, sir, what? In this triangle ACI, which angle is the exterior angle? Angle of incidence. See, this one. No? This gamma? is the triangle, yeah. ACI, this gamma is the exterior angle. This mm -hmm. gamma is the exterior. So exterior angle is equal to the sum of interior opposite angles. Means if you add this R plus beta, you will get this gamma. So you can write this as it's R plus beta should be equal to gamma. Or you can say that R is gamma minus beta. That is second equation. So this is the angle of refraction R, which is gamma minus beta. Next, what we can do is, so we have I and R in terms of alpha, beta, and gamma. So now apply Snell's law here. Here, angle of, see, the refractive index is N, angle of incidence is I, refractive index is N2, angle of refraction is R. So you can apply Snell's law in this way. N1 into sine I is equal to N2 into sine I. That's my third, uh, third, third is already for third equation. Now, we'll be using small angle approximation. Small angle approximation says if angles are small, then you can write sine i is approximately equal to r. And you can write your sine r as approximately equal to r. So this is my r that was gone. It's a sine r, it's a sine r. So what we can do is, this is equation number four. We can substitute four and three. So when we substitute four and three, what we get is get n one into sine i. Sine i is i. It's n two into r. That's equation number five. Next, what we can do is we can substitute this uh, one n two in five. We can simply substitute equation number one and equation number two in equation number five. We can sim simply substitute one into n five. So when we do this substitution, so I will get n one into i. i is gamma plus alpha is equal to n two into r. r is gamma minus beta. This is equation number six. Now I need the values of this gamma alpha, beta, and this beta. So to get the values of these things, I can use these triangles. Like I'm using triangle A and C. See, this right angle triangle, A and C. In triangle A and C. I need tan gamma. Angles are small, so tan gamma will be equal to gamma only. Ahmed, tell me, how much is tan gamma in this triangle, A and C? I need expression in terms of ratio of sides. Sorry? A n by n. It's a n by 
and C, right? Perpendicular upon base. So it's A N by N C. Similarly, say this is my equation. Similarly, I need the value of this alpha. For alpha, I will use this triangle A N O. In triangle A N O. Can you tell me how much is tan alpha? This A N O. Uh, Sanya, how much is tan alpha in terms of ratio of sides? Sanya, is just a right angle triangle. A N, mm -hmm. A -N by O B. A, A N by O N. O N, very good. A N by O N. Or I will write this as A N by N. So this is A N by N. This is equation number eight. <clears throat> and the next is, I need the value of tan beta also. Tan beta is small angle approximation is equal to beta. So Fatma, how much is tan beta here? In triangle A and I, I'm using this triangle A and I. How much is tan beta? <coughs> yes, Radha. What is tan beta? Uh, 90 degree minus. No, 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 no. In terms of ratio of sides. In terms of ratio of sides. So, which side by which side? This is a right angle triangle A, N, I. In terms of ratio of side. Opposite by hypotenuse. A, N by A, I. A, N by N, I. So it will be a n by n. So that is equation number nine. <coughs> so next, what we can do is we can substitute all these values in six. We will substitute seven, eight, and nine in equation number six. So we have n one. It's gamma plus alpha. Gamma is a n by n c plus alpha is a n by n o, which is equal to n two. It's gamma minus beta. So it's uh, a n by n c minus beta. It's a n by n. Now, this is one of the most important derivation of ray optics. It's a five marker question. This along with ray lens maker formula is always a five marker question. So this an, this an, this an, and this an will cancel out. And we can do one more approximation. We can approximate that this spherical surface that we are taking is very small. The aperture is very small, means the size is very small. If size is very small, that would mean that P and N are very, very close. So I will write, aperture is very small. Right, aperture is small. So if aperture is small, that means P and N are very close. Points, P and N are very close. are very close. So if these points are very close, that means this NC, you can write this NC as PC. You can write this NO as PO. And you can write this NI as PI. Do it. There are two more steps, but first of all, do these calculations and tell me if you have issue on any of the steps. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. अब इतना लिख लू तो बताओ मुझे सॉरी टेल मी फिर एनसी इज इक्वल टू पी सी ओके अब्दुल्ला कैन यू टेल मी हाउ मच इज पी सॉरी हाउ मच इज पी सी इन दिस फिगर Ladies of curvature. Ladies of curvature. We'll use a sign convention here. See, the light is going in this direction, so I will consider this direction as positive. So all directions which are in the direction of incident light are considered as positive, and all directions which are in opposite to that of the light will be taken as negative. Since light is traveling to the right hand side, so right hand side is positive and left hand side is negative. So Abdullah, this R it should be positive or negative? So P C is positive. Positive. See, you are moving from P to C. You are going in the direction of light. That's why this R should be positive. So you can say that. Uh, I will. N C is approximately equal to P C, which is equal to R. Similarly, this N O is approximately equal to P O. Ahmed, can you tell me how much is P U? With proper sign. Yes, I'm with. How much is P U with proper sign? I need. Yeah, but it would be neg negative and four minus U. Yes, sir. It's minus u minus object distance. Similarly, this n i is equal to p i. And see how much is p i. You're going from p to i. This is image distance. You're going to the right hand side. This image distance will be positive. Plus. Let's call this equation something. This is uh, tenth. Let's say this equation is equation number eleven. <clears throat> so we can do is can substitute eleven in ten. So this is n one. One by n c plus one by n. One by n c, so it's one by r. One by n o is minus one. Which is equal to n two. One by n c minus one by n i. One by n c n c is r. Minus one by n i minus one by v. So it's n one by r. Minus n one by u. Is n two by r minus n two by v. We can do one thing, like we can uh, put these terms to the left hand side and terms having r to the right hand side. 
So when I take this to the left hand side, we'll get n2 by v minus n1 by u is equal to n2 by r minus n1 by r. <coughs> so you can write this thing as n1 over minus u plus n2 by v. <coughs> you can take r common from these two terms. So it's n2 minus n1. <coughs> this is the required relation. Now the relation between the object distance, the image distance, radius of curvature, and refractive indices. This relation is valid for all of these cases, for all these four cases. The condition is rays should travel from rarer to denser medium. If it is traveling from rarer to denser, it doesn't matter what type of surface is this, what type of image is this, you will get the same relation. Now, the second issue is, <coughs> But before using this in numerical, you have to apply proper sign language. So when the numerical values are given in a numerical, you have to use the proper sign convention there. Do it. Then we do a similar uh, calculation <coughs> for refraction from denser to rarer. No, no. So can you show the fan formula? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, everyone have written? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, now let's do another case. Huh? So the another case is this, when the refraction is from denser to rarer, means your object is in denser medium <coughs> and your refraction is to the rarer medium. So we can have any of the cases. Now let's, earlier I pick this case, huh? convex and real. Now for this, let's pick, let's say concave and virtual. You can pick any of the case, you'll get the same result. So earlier I take convex, so I'm taking concave, earlier I take real, so I'm taking virtual. The result would not would not matter. So refraction. From denser to rarer medium. Rare medium. for a concave refracting surface. <laughs> I 
and let's say the image is virtual. So let's take this thing a denser to rarer from a concave refracting surface. So this is a concave refracting surface. This is N1, which is rarer medium. So see, it's concave towards the rarer medium. So it's a concave refracting surface. This is N2, huh, which is denser medium. Now let's draw the diagram. This is pole. This is our object. So I insert in the ray at this point. Now, since the ray is moving from denser to rarer, so let's draw the normal first one. This is the normal. So this is the center of curvature, that's the normal. Since ray is moving from denser to rarer, it will bend away from the normal. This bends away from the normal. So when you produce this in the opposite direction, when you reproduce this wave ray in the opposite direction, it appears to meet at the point, and this is the image. See, we have two rays. One ray, which is going in this direction. I should use just one second. So this is your object. This is the center of curvature. So this is your incident ray. This is a normal. So this is the normal. So if since ray is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium, so it will bend away from the norm. So this ray will go in like this. This ray will go like this. After refraction, it will go like this. When you produce this ray in the opposite direction, then it will appear to meet at some point. It will appear to meet here. This point is the virtual image. Let's make this line as dotted. See, you will get image where the two rays will meet. This is one ray. This go in this way. This is another ray. This go in the straight direction. So these two rays will not meet anywhere. But when you produce them in the opposite direction, then they appear to meet at a point. This point is known as image. This is the image. So this is our object. This is pole. This distance is the object distance. This distance is the image distance. This distance is the radius of curvature. This angle is the angle of incidence. This angle is the angle of refraction. We call this angle as alpha. We call this angle as beta. And we call this angle as gamma. And this is normal. So it should. So 
So this is the normal range. So this is the ray diagram for a concave refracting surface <laughs> with the image is virtual. Just This is the refracted ray. This is the refracted. Yes, sir. Done. Yes, sir. Done. Sure, okay, fine. <coughs> the next is. Uh, now again, just like the previous cases, let's. <clears throat> name this point as M. <coughs> this is M. So this is angle of incidence. This is angle of refraction. This is alpha, beta, and gamma. So next, what we can do is we can connect these things. Like if I take triangle MOC, triangle MOC, this I is the exterior angle and alpha and gamma are the interior opposite angle. It's the same steps, I is alpha plus gamma, that's first equation. Similarly, if I take this triangle, MIC, even the name of the triangles are same. MIC, beta plus gamma is equal to R. R is beta plus gamma, this is it. The next, just like the previous case, we apply Snell's law, N1 into sin R is equal to N2 into sin R small angle approximation. So I write N1 into I, the same derivation, line by line. The only difference is this thing. That's the only difference. Let's call this as three. We can substitute one and two in three. When we do these substitutions, I will get N1 I, which is alpha plus gamma into R, which is N2 beta plus gamma. That's equation number four. Next, I can get the value of alpha, beta, and gamma from these triangles. Like in triangle, for the value of alpha, I'm using this triangle O M N. In triangle O M N. O M N tan alpha is M N by N. Tan alpha, which is approximately equal to alpha, which is M N by N. That is my equation number fifth. Similarly, in triangle, this one, M and I, tan beta is approximately equal to beta, which is M and Y, which is M and Y and I. 
this is equation number six. <coughs> Similarly, tan gamma is m n by n c. In triangle m c n tan gamma is approximately equal to gamma, which is mn by nc. That is equation. So this is it. <coughs> Similarly, now if I substitute these values in this equation for, <coughs> let's substitute five, six, and seven in four. So I will get N1 into alpha plus gamma. So alpha is this Mn by N1. So line by line, each step is same. Gamma is Mn by Nc, which is N2. It's Mn by uh, beta, which is Ni, plus gamma, which is Mn by Nc. So that's the same equation, na? alpha plus gamma, yes, beta plus gamma. So this Mn gets canceled out on both the sides. Next, you can write NO as PO. See, this is PO, P2O, that's minus of U. Similarly, NC is approximately equal to PC. So PCs are plus R. Similarly, NI, like from N to I, you're moving in our direction opposite to that of light. So NI is minus of V. NI is almost equal to PI, which is minus of V. So when you do all these substitutions, I get N1, one by minus U, plus one by R, N2, one by minus B, plus one by R. Now you can just like the previous case. It's N1 by minus U, plus N1 by R, N2 by minus B, plus N2 by R. So what we can do is we can take terms having R to the right hand side and other terms to the left hand side. So we write this as it's N2 by V minus N1 by U. <coughs> it's N2 by R <coughs> minus N1 by R. So it should be n one by u, right? Uh, just one second. N one by minus u plus n one by r. N two by minus v plus n two by r. So I take this to the left hand side. So n two by v minus n one by u, which is equal to n two by r minus n one by r. Yes. It's correct, right? Yeah, it's correct. Huh? Just one second. Let me check. Yes. If I yes, it's correct. Yes, it's correct. Just one second. Now it's even a mistake of single sign. I can just erase the whole calculation. Minus v plus r. N one by minus u plus n one by r is n two by minus v plus n two. Take it to the left hand side. Once again, did I make some mistake? Mm -hmm. 
भाई यहां पर मीडियम क्या है रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स क्या है एन टू और एंगल है आए लेकिन असल में सेम रिलेशन आ गया सेम नहीं आ सकता hmm. गड़बड़ दिख रही है सॉरी दिस वाज आर यू गेटिंग द मिस्टेक यस मिल गई यस सर सपोज एन टू एंड दिस इज आई सो दिस इज द So that's n two into sine i. It's n one into sine i. So it's n two i into n one i. So it's n two is n one. So this is n two. This is n. This is two. This is one. We'll get the right answer. So this is n two. <coughs> this is n one. <coughs> n two. Yeah, it's n two by minus. No, it's correct. Plus n two by r is n one by minus two. Plus n one by r. <coughs> Take term having r to the right hand side. So it's n two by minus two. Minus u plus n one by v is equal to n one by r minus n two by r. So you can write n two over minus u plus n one by v is r is n two. This is the relation. See, this is for denser to rarer. In both the relations, the only difference is, if in this relation you put one instead of two, and you put two instead of one, then you will get this relation. See, this is n one by minus u, so that will be n two by minus u plus n one by v. See, n two by minus u plus n one by v. It's n two minus n one by r. This is n one minus n two by r. <laughs> so if you can interchange one and two in the rare to denser, then we get the relation of denser to rare now. So no need to memorize two formula. Just remember one, and for denser to rare, instead of one put two, instead of two put one. Okay, do these calculations. We'll do some numerical split. <laughs> Yes, written.
Sure. Yes, great. Abdullah Ahmed. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, let's start some numericals now. So the first question on this concept is light from a point source in here. Yeah. Falls on a convex. Convex. Spherical glass surface. So having refractive index is equal to 125. Radius of curvature is 20 centimeter. It's 20 centimeter. Distance of light source. Glass surface glass surface is hundred centimeter. At what position? Is the image form? Is the image so light from a point source in here falls on a convex spherical glass surface radius of curvature of the surface is 20 centimeter distance of light source from the glass surface 100 centimeter at what position is the image from so see this is a glass surface so 
this is a convex spherical glass surface. So this is the center of curvature of the surface. This is the pole of the surface. This is the radius of curvature. So this is air and this is glass. This is an object in air. Your object is at a distance of 100 centimeter. Distance of 100 centimeter. At what position is the image formed? We need the image position. So first of all, you have, this is the direction of light. So first of all, you have to decide what type of refraction is this. Is this refraction from rarer to denser medium or this is denser to rarer medium? Who will tell? Rarer to denser. Yeah, rarer to denser, right? Because light is coming from air to glass. So the refraction is from rarer to denser. Now, what is the relation for refraction from rarer to denser? N1 by minus E. Plus N2 by V is n2 minus n1 see in both of our derivations n1 is always rarer and n2 is always denser so when you remember these relations remember this term this thing also that n1 is always rare and n2 is always denser when we derive this relation we have taken these standards n1 is always rarer and n2 is always denser so let's put all values n1 n1 is air so what's the refractive index air one one n2 is glass the refractive index one is point five. see object distance this is the object 100 centimeter. so it will be 100 or it will be minus 100 Minus 100. See, you are moving in a direction opposite to that of light. Light is going in this direction. All distances you will measure from pole. You start from pole to pole. You are going in a direction which is opposite to the direction of light. So it's minus 100. Minus 100 centimeter. And R is the radius yes. of the Yes. So we are taking that minus in the formula itself, right? Yeah, but still, whenever you use this in numerical, you have to use sign convention. Sorry. Yes, sir, clear. And radius of curvature is 20 centimeter. So, uh, Sanya, can you decide the size, sign of R? It will be positive or negative R? This is positive direction. Yes, Sanya. Negative. Negative. See, we always start from P and go to C. We always starting point is always P. So when you start from P and you're going to C, in which direction are you moving? To the right hand side or to the left hand side? Sanya, you start from P and go to C. In which direction are you moving? Right or left? The right hand side. Right hand. What's the right side? Is it positive or negative? Positive. The direction of light. So R will be? Positive. And it's plus 20 centimeters. Substitute all these values here and get the value of P. Make all these substitutions here, N1, N2, R, U, get the value of P. <coughs> yes, Abdul, that's correct. <coughs> yes, answers. Everyone have written the question? Yes, sir. 
get the value of v abdullah got the right answer Nineteen. No. Sanya, Fatma, Amalia, answers. Just one equation, one variable. You just have to substitute the values in. Good, Amalia. Sanya, Fatma. See one line calculation instead of n one, just put one. Instead of u, put minus hundred. N two put one point five. V is v. N two minus n one one point five minus one divided by r, which is twenty. So one by hundred is one by hundred plus. 1.5 by v is 0.5 by 20. No, no, Fatma. So 1.5 by v is 0.5 by 20 minus 1 by 100. So 1.5 by V is, <coughs> you can take 100 at LCM, <coughs> 20 into 5. So it will be 2.5 minus 1. So 1.5 by V is 1.5 by 100. V is equal to plus 100. <coughs> okay, Sanya, Fatma. Yes, sir. Good, we'll do another variable. Same concept. So, why did we multiply minus 100 with minus? It's because this is minus u. You have to put u with the proper sign. See, Emma, this is a general formula. Okay. This is valid for all type of cases, real, virtual, convex, concave. For any particular case, you have to substitute the sign again. These type of relations in ray optics are known as general relations. Whenever you use this relation in a numerical, you have to substitute the sign convention. Yes. Okay, let's see. Next one. So you have a point O. O marked on the surface. of a glass sphere of diameter 20 centimeter is viewed through glass
from the position. <coughs> directly opposite. If the refractive index of glass is one point five, find position of image. So I'm drawing the ray diagram. Although ray diagram is not given in question, but I'm given drawing the ray diagram. See, this is your sphere. This is the center of curvature of the sphere. And this is your object. So this is the incident ray. This is the normal. So ray is going from denser to rarer. So what will happen? It will bend toward it will bend towards the normal or away from the normal? Away from away from the normal. So it will slightly bend in this way. So the refraction is over the surface. Rays, this is glass. And refractive index of the glass is 1.5. And this is air. Refractive index is one. This is the pole. This is your object. I guess radius of curvature is diameter is given. This is given 20 centimeters. Now try to do it yourself. Try to get the value for object distance. The hint is this is the object distance. <coughs> if object distance is there, you can get the value of radius of curvature. Diameter is 20, so radius of curvature would be 10. Refraction is from denser to rarer, so you know relation for denser to rarer. <coughs> Sir? Yes. Sir, how we know that it is from denser to rarer? It's because rays are going from glass to air. Right. So like, um, from that question, how will I identify? Uh, a point oh, marked on the surface of a glass. See, there's a point on the surface of glass, which is viewed through glass. So if someone is viewing this mark through glass, then it must be viewing it from here. He can't view it from here. It's not through glass, right? The ray will come directly to him. Through glass means your observer is here. So to reach this observer, ray should pass. First it will travel in glass, then it will travel in air. That's why it stands at a ray. So what would be the object distance? This is the object, this is pole. I guess object distance will be equal to diameter. Right. Yes. <coughs> Use the appropriate relation for denser refraction from denser to rare. Yes, anyone got the answer?
answers. No, Ahmed. No, Ahmed. No, no, Abdullah. Not infinite. Okay, I'm sorry. See, <coughs> object distance is this is the object. This is the pole. Object distance is minus twenty centimeter. The light is going in this direction. You're moving in a direction opposite to that of light. So your radius of curvature is negative, <coughs> minus 10. See if diameter is 20, then radius is 10. N1 is 1. N2 is 1.5. Very good, Amalia. Amalia, what is the sign? Is positive or negative? Well, you're going to write answer. Now, the refraction is from denser to rarer. So we'll use N1 by V minus N2 by U is N1 minus N2 divided by R. So N1 is 1, V is unknown, no MS. Minus N2 is 1.5, U is minus 20. And 1 minus N2, 1.5 by R. R is minus 10. Really? Yes. Nothing. So we get 1 by V is. This is normal. It should be negative. Minus 0 0.5. <coughs> Damn, I should write more steps. <coughs> so it's 1 by V. Plus 1.5 by 20 minus 0 0.5 by 10. So you can put it to the right hand side, you'll get 1 by V is minus 0 0.5 by 10. So it would be minus 10. Minus 1.5 by 20. No, I'm not. So it's 20. 10 to 2 into 0.5 is 1, minus 1.5. So I made some mistake. R is minus, N1 is 1. <coughs> so it should be positive. So it's minus of 0.5 divided by 20. So which is, so your V is minus 20 by 0.5. 20 by 0.5 means double of it, 40. Amalia got this answer. Yeah. So minus 40 means from pole, <coughs> it's minus 40 centimeter means here. This will be the final position. So you'll get your image. So will that be a real or a virtual image? That's a virtual image. Right? You'll get a virtual image. Good. So it is minus 0 0.5, right? Sorry. This is Ahmed, Abdullah. And it should be 1.5 minus 1, right? 1.5 minus 1. No, it's always N1 minus N2. No? The refraction is from denser to rarer, not rarer to denser. See? No, no, but our N1 is glass, right? Hmm? N1 is glass or N1 is air? No, no, no. no. N1, this is what I wrote. N1 is always rare, N2 is always denser. 
So we have, we did our derivation in a way that N one is always a rarer medium and N two is always a denser medium. It's okay. Yes, sir. This is what I was telling that we derive in a way that N one whenever you have N one that's always a rarer medium. Whenever you have N two, it's always a denser medium. So written. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'll stop here. So this is refraction through a spherical refracting surface is over. In the next class, we will continue with the lens. This is over. So I guess next class will be the last class of refraction. Only lens is left. Okay. If you have doubts, we can discuss the rest. I love this. Okay, now this. Sir, I have a question. Yes, I know. Maybe out of syllabus. Mm -hmm. Logi. Yeah, like when we view through a glass, why do we see things full time? It's very well, bright light. Well, that depends on what type of lens are you taking. It can... So even raindrop. Mm -hmm. Like when you... Um, see through a raindrop and like it will be like upside down it's not always it's upside down that depends at what position have you placed your object like if you are getting a real image that real image will always be inverted uh, we will just uh, keep this question with you once I started the lens huh? in lens we will do ray diagrams then you will get the answer of your question it's not yeah. always we get the inverted image. We get sometimes we get inverted image. Sometimes we get the rear image, like the type of image that you uh, see in your mirror. That's a real image, right? Yes, sir. But there are certain mirrors like concave mirror which generate virtual image. Oh, sorry, inverted image of the object. So if you take a mirror like a concave mirror, that concave mirror will generate a inverted image of it. That depends upon the type of mirror and the type of lens you are taking. Also, at what position you have placed your object. This you will understand when we do lenses in the next class. So again, yes. Yeah.